All praises and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Basham Harukakudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone which taught us the truth. And shalom to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. May you endure to the end. Shalom. This is Romans 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law had dominion over a man as long as he liveth. All right? So we are made free from that law by Yahweh Shai. Okay? Verse 22 of Romans 6, But now being made free from sin and became servants to Yahweh by Sham Yahweh Shai, we have your fruit of unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, is eternal life through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord. All right, so it says in verse 1 of Romans 6, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Because that gift from Yahweh through Yahweh Shai made us free from the law so that we could be married to Yahweh Shai. Let me grab uh, Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Yahweh through our Lord, Yahweh Shahamashiach. It says, let's go to 7, Romans 7. Verse 4, Romans 7, verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Hamashiach, that we, that ye, should be married to another. <coughs> and what it's referencing is here in verse 2, it talks about the law of marriage. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband, and a woman receives a husband by a man sticking his rod in her and taking her virginity. That's her original husband. Now, a lot of these women have many husbands. You know, they lost their virginity when they were younger, but that man's still alive, and they still be out here popping all kinds of different men, or getting popped, I should say. It says... But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. And that's what these women are today, are adulteress. All right, they're whores, and they're going to be punished for it. And it, really it's talking about the men of Israel going off and serving another God, like these women that leave their first love, their first husband, the one that took their virginity, and sleep around with different men. All right? You're an, you're an adulteress. You became a idolater because a woman, her husband is her Lord. So the men that leave the Lord and serve a false God, like Caesar Boger, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, all right, that's adultery, that's idolatry, okay? And it's punishable by death because the true image of Yahweh Shai is found in the scriptures. Revelation chapter 1 is a good one. It tells you that he's a dark-skinned Judite, a so-called Negro, all right? It says... So that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, 
my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law. So we're free from the law through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto Yahweh. Now, does that mean we should go off and sin? Once again, I read that in Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai forbid. So no. How shall we that be that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were as were baptized in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Hamashiach was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, which our Father's name is Yahweh, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And that's why in 1 Peter chapter 2, it tells you, Wherefore, laying aside all malice, which is a malicious thoughts, of being violent and all guile, deceit and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Lord. I'm sorry, the milk of the word, which the word was made flesh, which is our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that ye may grow thereby. Okay. So, Going back to he, uh, Romans, let's go back to 5. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Yahweh through our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. All right? Verse 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience. And experience hope, and hope make it not ashamed, because the love of Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Hamashiach died for the ungodly. And those ungodly were Israelites, all right, our Israelites. And salvation is only for the Israelites. And we're to come into this knowledge of being saved through Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. Let me go back to that first Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises. That word praises goes into the value of him who had called you out of darkness, which is that sin, into his marvelous light, into the truth of Yahweh Shai, that he gave us a gift, which is spoke of in Romans 6. I'm going to start at verse 21. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, all right, because when we go to the scriptures, we're washed by the word, and it's no longer us, but sin that is in the flesh. That's why we're going to get new bodies, which are not going to be sinful. And become servants to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, ye have your fruit unto holiness. Before we were in the truth, our fruit that we bared was wickedness, sin, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. So that's why we, we were given over to death. But now we have life. But the gift which it was a gift given to us from Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai 
of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord. All right, and that gift was him marrying us, freeing us from the law. All right, he died and was resurrected. It says in Romans 7 verse 5, for when we were in the flesh, that's when we were sinner, all right, we were willing sinners, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members <coughs> to bring forth fruit unto death, which I just said. When we were in the world, we were committing willful sin, which was pretty much walking us to the way of death. But now that we're in the truth, married to Yahweh Shai through his sacrifice by the power of Yahweh, brought into remembrance of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai through the word. All right, now we're free from that death. That's why we have the promise of eternal life, which righteousness is immortal. That's our immortality, is his righteousness. It says, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held that we should serve the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. All right. And that spirit is what? The spirit of prophecy. All right. Because the spirit, there's gifts that come with the spirit. Okay. Now the letter of the law is, is a school teacher. It says, what shall we say then? Is law is the law sin? Keeping the law sin? Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai forbid. Nay, so no. It's good for you to keep the law. But will the law save you? No. Yahweh Shai is our savior. I had not known sin but by the law. So that's what the law is for, is to identify sin. For I, ha I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. So as long as the law is in existence, all right, it's going to bring death because you can't keep the law. You're in mortal, corrupted flesh, and you're in a wicked society ruled by the devil, the so-called white man. All right? <clears throat> Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So how do we, how do we fight this? So that we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. It says, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. And that's the good fight of faith. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. And that's what you do. You cut yourself with the law. See, there's cutting to destroy and there's cutting to heal. And that's what you do. You cut yourself with the law to heal, not to destroy yourself. You don't condemn yourself with your conscience. You cut yourself to know what is right and what is wrong. And as you do that, all right, you will be brought back into that light. It says, now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So it's in the flesh. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, dwelleth no good thing. And you got to remember, we're going to get new bodies. That's why you can't let your conscience condemn you. For to will is present with me through the spirit. I want to do what the Lord wants me to do. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. 
Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. All right? By what? By checking in the law. You go into the scriptures and you find the law that you broke and you repent. You pray unto Yahweh Ba'asham Yahushai and you ask him to forgive you of your sins. All right? If I find, all right, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh Ba'asham Yahushai after the inward man which is in the spirit. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And that's the, that's the spirit, the fight of faith, that good fight of faith. And it says, uh, a righteous man falls seven times All right, so it says, Proverbs 24, verse 16, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief, because a wicked man is going to give himself over to the sin. He's going to stop fighting and just allow it to take over him. But a righteous man, as many times as he gets knocked down by the flesh, He's going to get up in the spirit and stand upon his feet and praise Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai for his mercy and for the sacrifice of his son Yahweh Shai. All right. So that you got to continue to fight, continue to move forward, not backward. You don't want to be a backsliding heifer. Uh, let me go ahead and get a contrite. Heart. It says in Psalm 34, verse 18, Yahweh is near, nigh, which means near unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. And that contrite is your fighting to, to stay in the faith, but at the same time, your flesh is trying to take you out. So you're in that fight, that good fight of the faith. All right, fight the good fight of faith. Uh, Psalms 51, verse 17, The sacrifices of Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, which is the mind. O Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh thou will not despise. The Lord loves you if you'll fight for him. He will not despise you. A good example is a woman that is being raped and does not fight. Right, I'm going to start at verse... Twenty-two. If a man, and this is the law, if a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, when they, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman, and the woman. So shall thou put all evil from Israel. And the Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, which have been scattered throughout the world of slavery. And you got to remember, once again, all right, the image of Yahweh Shai, and you got Israelites calling on Caesar Bouget, which is right here. This is a false god. So that's just like a woman laying with a different man when she's married to another man. She has a husband. 
All right, Israel, the Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, and we're to be married to Yahweh Shai, but if you're in bed with Caesar Boje, Cesare Boje, that's adultery, that's idolatry. So this is the same that's going to happen to you in that day. Esau is going to be condemned, the so-called white men, and you that are in bed with him, all right? <clears throat> it says, verse 23, if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed, which is engaged unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring both bring them both out unto the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones, that they die, the damsel, because she cried not. Which you got two-thirds of the nation of Israel. They're not crying because of this. In fact, they're crying to this. Look at IUIC. Look at ISUPK. They're still using this name. Uh, Sakari, the Christian church. You got uh, the, the so-called black Christian church. You got the uh, so-called Latinos going to the Catholic, Roman Catholics. All right, they're in the Christianity, still calling upon this name. They're going to die. And what they're going to die from is a nuclear destruction. They're going to be stoned by missiles. It says that it, get, it actually calls the missiles hail. And it was spiritual yesterday, the Day of Atonement. We were fasting and praying for forgiveness. And uh, right at the end, it start hailing where we are real heavy. And it made me think of the scriptures about the hail that are going to fall upon this place. <clears throat> which is uh, in Revelation 6. Revelation 16, what has it in Revelation 11, Revelation 8, all right, so let's get Revelation, uh, we'll go ahead and start with uh, 11, Revelation 11, verse 19, and the temple of Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahushai, was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. That great hail is those nuclear missiles that are going to fall upon America. And Revelation 16 verse 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Every stone, and this is the one I was actually thinking about, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahushai because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. And what is that? That's that nuclear destruction. Look at 2nd Ed.